going to sing for you a song called Sweet King Williamstown. Now, King Williamstown was the name given to uh, a fairly nice and prosperous market town on the Kerry Cork border uh, by the British when they colonized Ireland and they had a habit of naming some of our nicest towns after the kings and queens. And after independence, uh, the names got changed in many cases and uh, Sweet King William's town became Bally Desmond and is known as Bally Desmond to this day. Uh, I learned the song Sweet King William's town somewhere back on the journey. I'm not quite sure uh, where I first heard it, but it was familiar to me. And I finally decided to learn it. Uh, and the reason I did was primarily, uh, there were two reasons. One is that I spent uh, many years in my young childhood with my grandmother in the Schlieve Lucre area of County Kerry, Cork. Uh, and uh, it was a place steeped in traditional music, very fond memories of it and of the people that I met there uh, in, in those young years. Uh, and I've always had an affection for the music and for the songs of that area. Also, the theme of the song is essentially emigration, leaving Ireland uh, and going off and, and, and ending up in America. And of course, uh, that appealed to me uh, after I, I went to America and, and decided to stay there. Um, and uh, so that was the general reason that I learned the song. But I didn't really know anything about it at all beyond that. And then uh, about 20 years ago, I was in a festival called Gaelic Roots in Boston, run by the great fiddle player Seamus Connolly. Uh, whom I'd known as a young fella in Limerick. He came from about uh, six miles away uh, on the wrong side of the, of, of the limerick Clare border in Killaloo. Well, that's my opinion. Uh, and I've been great friends with Seamus over the years. He's now living in North Carolina after running a wonderful festival in Boston College, kind of a legendary event that still lives on in many ways, called Gaelic Roots. And myself and Robbie were in the final concert there after spending a week teaching there. We were in the final concert on, on the Saturday night and we sang Sweet King Williamstown as part of the, our set list. And afterwards, a, a woman came up to me. I'd never seen her before. And she said, uh, I am from King Williamstown. Would you like to know the story behind that song? And I said, of course, I, I, I want to know the story. So the story is this. It was written by a man called Danny Buckley. And Danny Buckley was born in 1890 in the town of Boherbui in County Cork. Came from fairly well-to-do uh, people and they ran a bakery. It was a, um, a fairly prestigious trade at that time. And then they moved uh, to Bally Desmond, uh, a prosperous market town uh, on, the, on the main road to Cork. Uh, and at the age of 22, he was doing okay, but he decided, well, you know, his circumstances might be improved by going to America. So with a, a number of young friends of his from the same area and also uh, a cousin of his, Nora O'Leary, they set off for America in the year uh, 1912. And the ship they sailed on from Queenstown, now known as Cove, of course, was the Titanic. Now, when it hit the iceberg, uh, Danny Buckley uh, dressed very quickly and ran through a broken door in steerage. There was actually a door between steerage and first class where the lifeboats were. Uh, but the door had been broken. He went in and he found his way onto a lifeboat. Uh, and then uh, there were several men there, but men with revolvers, officers, uh, came onto the boat uh, and they ordered all the men off uh, and said they'd shoot them if they didn't go. And Danny Buckley started to cry and sob and he was on the floor of the boat and a woman took pity on him and threw her shawl over him. And disguised as a girl, he escaped the Titanic and uh, arrived in, in, in New York uh, and, uh, and, and settled there. But a month after the Titanic was sunk, the Senate uh, called uh, a, a hearing on, on the sinking of the ship. The Brits were furious that it's our ship. Well, uh, America said it was our passengers too. So subpoenaed to appear in front of the Senate hearing was Danny Buckley, the only Irishman actually uh, to appear in that hearing. And it's all on record, can be found to this day. And if you look uh, at a book uh, written by a namesake of mine, Maloney, uh, Sin and Maloney, The Irish and the Titanic, there are about three pages given to Danny Buckley and uh, much of it is to uh, quoting his, his Senate testimony where the story was in a sense dragged out of him. He came back to New York and was known thereafter ironically as, uh, and sardonically as Danny Buckley the girl. And who knows what effect that would have had in him as he worked in a hotel. But in 1917, after America joined the First World War, 
uh, he volunteered uh, to enlist and he enlisted in the 69th Regiment. There were apparently thousands of, of, uh, of Irishmen uh, who were in that regiment, so he was at home, as it were, and he was shipped abroad and served in the First World War. In the last week of the war, on the 15th of October, uh, 1918, he was the last American soldier to be shot, killed by a sniper as he was helping wounded escape the battlefield. Uh, the following year, he was taken back, his body was taken back and interred in, in, uh, in, the, in the cemetery overlooking uh, Bally Desmond, or as it became known a couple of years later. And uh, his cousin, Nora O'Leary, she served her time as a domestic in New York and, and uh, she didn't really like living there. She decided to go back home and she saved her money, went back and married and lived to a big age and died in the 1970s, also buried in the, in the same cemetery. And the woman who came up to me in Boston College and told me this extraordinary story, I think it's the most extraordinary story behind any song that I sing, uh, was Sheila O'Leary, a distant relation of Nora O'Leary. Joining me in this in North Carolina is uh, Haley Richardson, Sweet King Williamstown. My bonny bar floats wild and free across the surging foam. It brings me far from Minish Vale to seek a foreign home. A lonely exile driven far by misfortune's cruel frown. Far from the friends and the land I love In sweet King William's town While here upon the deck I stand And I gaze upon the darkening shore Fun thoughts arise all in my mind Of the land I do adore Of moonlit nights and happy hours How fast Years roll down as I'm thinking on those friends I love in sweet King William's town. Shall I no more gaze on that shore? Or view those mountains high Or walk along black water side Where I roamed once as a boy Or watch the sun or can up and above Light up the heather brown Before she flings her farewell beam On sweet King William's town Sweet King William's time. 